Hi, welcome to Epitropezume. I am super excited today and have two reasons to be super excited. The first one uh, is uh, being Greek myself, I have the opportunity and honor to present to you a new game by Alain Orban and Game Brewer, which is called Hippocrates. And the second reason, of course, is because Hippocrates is uh, one of the latest designs in uh, facilitating and exploring all the foundations that Hippocrates uh, laid out in order to establish uh, the Greek ancient medicine as a discipline into uh, the future. So they laid, he, together with uh, all his colleagues and students, laid the foundations in order to make medicine uh, a distinct uh, discipline that uh, uh, evolves further away from philosophy and theurgy as it used to be considered one and the same in the past. Now, uh, there are a lot of things that one can say about Hippocrates and I'm not going to go now explore and tell you all of this. There are so many historical books to do so and I highly invite you to learn more about Hippocrates if you don't know. But uh, consider that being the father of uh, ancient uh, uh, Greek medicine and laying the foundations for uh, ideas like, uh, you know, uh, uh, structural new hospitals, treatments, prognosis, and the corpus of Hippocratic corpus where actually considers all of this information together as knowledge for the new physicians. All of these ideas are extremely uh, important and well known throughout the history. Up to today, there is a Hippocratic oath where new doctors, even up to today, they have to take the oath in order to abide by the values and principles of uh, Hippo Hippocrates in order to fulfill their task and their service to the community. Uh, by treating patients. So, this game is a Euro-style game of strategy with a simple tile-laying mechanism but a lot of different uh, ideas and principles that blended together bring a lot of depth and a lot of options for us to explore. It has economic element uh, embedded and very finely uh, tuned into the mechanics of the game. It has uh, opportunists, uh, opportuni opportunities uh, to chase in order to gain uh, the majority of your income. You have to master not only a group of physicians that you need to pay, of course, but a queue of ever-evolving and uh, enlarging uh, amount of people coming to the temple of Asclepios in order to get treated because of uh, their diseases and uh, requesting for help. So, uh, this is how uh, ancient Greek medicine began. This is how all the foundation was uh, set into place and structured under extremely well uh, uh, conditions and framework throughout the work of Hippocrates. So, I highly invite you to join me to show you how the game plays. You can also um, visit the Kickstarter campaign in order to see uh, what the game offers. This is a gorgeous production. I mean, the, the prototype itself is amazing. I haven't seen such a great prototype for, for ages. I'm, I'm sure it's one of the best out there. So I can even imagine what they will do with the final production. Some uh, snapshots and some images, some teasers show uh, so much beautiful things. The art is amazing, the components is amazing, but overall this is a very very simple game in terms of mechanics and uh, ideas, but the depth is wow, beyond what I would expect. And uh, of course the designer is a known and uh, established designer with a uh, tremendous uh, designs like uh, Black Angel and Trois, but of course uh, I would expect nothing else from this one and here uh, it's it, he shows that uh, exactly all these principles and all these uh, ideas are put well together with a very very simple framework with a lot of depth and a lot of fun. So join me at the table, I'll show you how uh, the game works in practice and we'll come back at the end of this video as we do always for a, a final wrap-up and a summary about my experience from Hippocrates. Born into a time when illness was viewed as a punishment from the gods to be treated with religious practices, Hippocrates, however, saw natural causes behind patients' illnesses, attributing sickness to poor diets and environmental factors. Hippocrates used a natural approach to treatment, relying on rest and basic medicine. But now, Hippocrates is an old man nearing the end of his life and his hopes to keep medicine grounded in science rest on the next generation of physicians. In this game, you are a physician, leading a team of doctors to heal the sick and treat the wounded while maintaining a high standard of professionalism. The player, who can balance all the elements efficiently, 
will find themselves a worthy successor to the Hippocrates and winner of the game. So very happy to dive into this new game from Alain Urban and Game Brewer, which is all about Hippocrates and his legacy in um, ancient Greece and in modern medicine. First of all, keep in mind that this is a prototype. It is an, indeed a gorgeous looking prototype, one of the biggest main boards I have seen and I think many of uh, other will also agree with me, but uh, everything still is a prototype material. So I have set up the game for four players, but let's quickly dive into the components and familiarize ourselves with what's what. First of all, we have this huge eight-folded main board. As you can see, I can hardly fit it into my screen, so I had to set it sideways because it's really, really huge and gorgeously illustrated as well. Then we have 30 doctors, five from each of the six regions. You can see the regions at the back of these piles, indicating the various regions throughout ancient uh, history at that era. First of all, we have from left to right, we have Macedonia, we have Carthage, then we have uh, Persia, followed by Alexandria, then it's Greece, and then of course, it's uh, Cyrene. So first of all, what we do is we take all the doctors, which are, they look like that, and we separate them by the back, making respective piles and placing them in this specific order as I have seen, I'm showing you on your screen. Then we have uh, all these balls are not included, I'll just use it so that we can have everything close to us so that we can easily grab everything. You have the welcome, the six welcome dice, which are those here, beautifully illustrated, even though it's a prototype and they're going to look even better in the final production. We have 90 medicine vials. The blue ones are the potions, the green ones are the herbs and uh, the purple ones are the eugens, the, the unguents, sorry. Therefore, all three of them are used in the game. Again, this is prototype of material and the final production contains a gorgeous, uh, I think, plastic, great looking uh, vials as well. Then we have, of course, the player boards. Each player is going to take one of these personal player boards, which uh, depict their color. They have various areas that we're going to explain, like from top to bottom, um, uh, this is the emergency room, this is Hades, and this is the examination room on top. We're going to explain what's what, so don't worry about that. Each player is taking one of those. In addition, each player is going to take several things that I'm going to go through the personal player setup. You start with uh, six drachmas, three potions, one of each, uh, three medicine vials actually, uh, not potions, potions are the blue, three medicine vials, one of each color, blue, purple and green for potions, unguents and herbs respectively, your starting doctor which has your color around the border and also you get three assistant tokens, one of each uh, color on the top. Again we're going to explain them later on. Keep in mind you also need your option token which is comes in your own color respectively. In addition what we have is we have four victory point markers that they are going around the edge of the board I cannot fit the edge on the bottom, so you can imagine that this is the score track going all around. But um, again, these are just discs, they're going to be custom victory point markers. You have four reputation markers, again, starting at the starting space over here. And uh, these are going to be on top of each other. The one on the top is the one playing first with uh, the highest reputation. We're going to explain reputation on this track later on, how it works. We have four welcome pawns. Uh, for the moment I have inserted them, as you can see, to match this welcome um, order, but uh, they're going to be uh, used in this turn when you start to use this respective phase. You're just nice, beautifully looking columns as well. This track has two columns. The first one on the top is the passive and the one on the bottom is uh, the active. We're going to explain it later on. You have 30 knowledge tiles that come into these types, as you can see. You also have 30 medicine kits. 
the doctors per region, as you have seen, and uh, that concludes all the components. So let's see how we set up the game and how we start playing Hippocrates. Oh, and I forgot to mention the most important thing, of course, the patients. We have 72 patients in the six regions, matching the regions of the doctors, as you can see on the top. And this is the area where we place starting patients. Of course, there are 12 in each of the six colors indeed. So let's go via the setup. First of all, what we do is we lay out the game board in the middle of the table. If you can find a table to fit this huge board indeed. Then, second, you separate the doctors by region, as you can see here, and have already done so. Shuffle each group separately to form six stacks of five doctors each, and place each stack face down in a regional recruitment zone, which eff effectively is exactly as shown here. From left to right, you have Macedonia, Carthage, Persia, Alexandria, Greece, and Cyrene. Therefore, this is exactly the specific order that you need to match for your face down stacks of regional doctors. Then for there, what you do is you draw one doctor for each of those stacks randomly and you place one doctor face up on each of those four free region zones that you see on top of the temple. Of course, two of them will not be selected, therefore for the moment you just take them and put them outside of the main board and keep them there because they may be used during uh, the later stages. For the moment, you just put four of them on the board and just directly position on the slots that they are included on top of the temple itself. Next, what you do, after you have placed the two remaining extra doctors face down in a stack next to the board, you go to separate the patients by regions and shuffle each group separately. Let's see that. Therefore, we separate the patients by region, same regions, in the same sequence as you see for the doctors, those piles here. And what we do is, from each of these uh, stack, we take three patients and fill these slots respectively. So from the Macedonia stack, we're going to take three and put them here. The remaining stack is going to be placed face up. The only reason I had it face down is to show you that they are corresponding to the respective regions. So face up stack at the bottom on the dark highlighted baseline and three from each of these regions on the respective column above. So essentially each column uh, uh, facilitates and has only patients from that specific region as it makes sense. So this is how the patient half bottom part of uh, uh, the main board would look like once set up. Next what we do is we take all the uh, separate medicine kits, shuffle them and place a stack of four kits face down on each of the six dedicated spaces. We flip the topmost medicine kit face up on the top of the respective stack as shown here. These are the med kits on this row. We return the six leftover tiles to the box. They're not going to be used for this game. Then the last thing that we do is we shuffle the knowledge tiles and place a stack of four knowledge tiles face up on each of the six dedicated spaces and we return the six leftovers again to the box. So you have four medkits and four knowledge tiles uh, at the bottom of each of the stacks of the respective region doctor pile. The medicivials and drachmas are set near the board in piles for is easily accessed from everybody. You can use containers like myself to have them handy. Please note that all of the components are not considered to be limited, so if you run out, use a suitable substitute. Then we have the player setup, of course. First of all, each player chooses a color and takes the corresponding components, which are the player board, the basic doctor with the border uh, matching the color chosen, the option token, which is this one, the reputation marker, which I have already put on the reputation track as I have shown you before, and the welcome marker matching their color. Of course, they also get a victory point marker. If you're playing with fewer than four players, you return leftover player boards, basic doctors, option tokens, VP markers, and all the rest back to the box, uh, and then you just keep 
uh, the discs respectively. Of the solo player, meaning for the solo player you'll keep it because you need to have them as well. Then you put your player board in the table in front of you, you place your basic doctor next to you and your option token beside your board. This is your option token again. And this is your basic doctor, your starting doctor. You take one of each type of assistant tokens, one, two, three. Keep in mind that these are, um, they have symbols from the back for easy reference, but it's one of each of those matching the symbols on the top of your player board. What you do is uh, you put them all next to your player board and you just select one of your choice and include it on your player board to indicate that you have this available and ready to use. Then you take six drachmas from the main supply. This is your starting money. You take one medicine vial of each of the three kinds and place them next to your player board. And you place your victory point marker on space zero of the victory point track. For solo games, you add all three non-player VP markers to the space zero for the VP track. Randomly, you place all players welcome markers from left to right on the top of the row of the welcome track. And again, for players with less than four, for games with less than four players, you place all of the non-player welcome markers randomly after the randomized player markers. The first player places a reputation marker on the starting space of the reputation track, and the second, the third, and the fourth place a reputation marker on top of the starting player's marker in that player order. This is a reputation marker, um, uh, the reputation track um, order, and if two or more players are on the same space of the reputation track, the player on top is considered to be further ahead. Last but not least, we give the six dice to the first player, and we're ready to start. So what is a game overview? Following in the footsteps of Hippocrates, players will navigate the world of ancient medicine with a little bit of science and diagnostic knowledge to guide their practice. The game takes place over four rounds and in each of those rounds players will need to balance the treatment of patients with the cost of buying medicine and recruiting doctors. Efficiently healing the sick will bring great repute and success to you and your medical team and you'll be awarded the best doctor in this ancient era. So let's see the gameplay. The gameplay spans over four rounds and in all four rounds players will perform actions in each of the following five steps. The first step is welcome, where you receive three new patients over three turns. The second step is payment, where you pay your doctors. The third step is recruitment, where you hire new doctors and purchase medicine. The fourth step is treatment, where of course you would be treating your patients. And the last step, the fifth the fifth phase is a score phase where you gain reputation and victory points. So, five steps, five phases for each of the four rounds in the game. Each player will take three turns during the welcome phase and will perform the following steps in each turn. First, we roll the die, the first player only, the dice in order to see where we assign them on the main board. We'll execute this and show you how this is done. Then you welcome patients and take assistance. And once all players have finished their three turns, we move to the next step which is collect the offerings and then we'll be moving to the next phase which is the payment of course so let's see each of those phases how do they work in practice let's start by the welcome eroste phase first phase welcome eroste the reputation of hippocrates and his protege is renowned patients have arrived at the temple of asclepios from around the western world to receive the best medical care available the queue are long and the doctors are few, so they have prepared offerings to increase the likelihood that they will be chosen for treatment first. Let's see the anatomy of one of those patient tiles, all of this in front of your patient tiles. So for example, we have this tile over here, where you can see that first of all we have the name indicated over there. Then we have the number patient, which is only referenced in uh, fewer than four players games for non-player turns. Then we have the offering over here, which is the four drachmas that this patient offers. Then we have, of course, the combination of medicine that this patient requires in order to be fully treated. And of course, here you can see the victory points awarded once they're healed. All of the patient tiles follow the same anatomy 
and they just have different type of combination of medicines needed, uh, offerings that they give, victory points, depending on, of course, uh, the whole balance of the game. Now, as we said, each player uh, will take three turns during the welcome phase and they're going to perform the following steps in order. Roll the dice, the first player only, welcome patients and take assistance and collect the offerings. So let's see each of those separately. First of all, we roll the dice. At the start of each of the player's turns, the first player, meaning the player whose marker is leftmost on the welcome track, rolls all six dice and place each one of them in the respective matching uh, column on the respective number. So therefore, you take all those dice, you roll them, and then you go and match. For example, this is number three. Again, this is number three off camera. Number three. How many threes did I get? Okay, and then you get also number three for those here, number two for those here. And also number three for those here. So for some funny reason I rolled too many threes in, <laughs> on my roll, but let's spread them so that it makes more sense visually. Because you can have various allocations depending of course on the die uh, roll. And this will occupy each die need to go on the specific region and the number is going to be either one two or three sitting next to one slot as seen here keep in mind that these dice will remain in place for all players this turn and each player then takes a turn to welcome new patients so we go to the welcome patients step there are two welcome track rows as you can see one on the top where our welcome tokens start and one at the bottom where our welcome tokens will end the top passive row where your marker is standing before you welcome a new patient and the lower active row where you move your welcome marker to welcome a patient each turn in the welcome track order going left to right on the top row players now each take a turn to welcome patients the welcome track order may change with each turn of the phase. So you move your welcome marker from the passive row, the top one, to an empty space in the active row and take a patient from the column's queue. You cannot choose the same space as another player, only you will take the patient from this column this turn and no one else. So therefore, starting with this player, they can choose whichever queue they prefer and they move on the bottom to indicate that they're going to take one patient from this queue, specifically the one next to the die. You may only take the patient in that column that is located next to a die, unless you use an assistant token, we'll see assistance later. You take and place the patient in the examination room of your player board, therefore this player would just select this patient next to the die and take them and place them on one of the slots in their examination board as indicated here. This is examination area, this is the emergency area, and this is height. So this is how you acquire the patient tile. Keep in mind that you gain or lose any medicine, drug, mass, reputation and victory points as indicated below the space from which you took the patient. You see, you have various listings here at the bottom of the, uh, the location for the patient. You do not get gain uh, you do not get, uh, gain yet the drachmas offered by the patient itself. So you're not going to get the five drachmas here, but you're going to get, for example, three herbs and you're going to lose two reputation. Keep in mind that whenever you have black font, that's gain, and whenever you have red uh, font, that means lose, means pay. And they vary. For example, here you need to pay drachmas, but you gain reputation. And you have various setups on the board. In some turns, it is possible the spot next to the die that will be empty through manipulation. You may still choose this region and space, but instead of taking a patient tile, you gain the bonus, drachmas and assistance depicted within the empty space. You do not gain or lose the normal rewards as when taking a patient which are at the bottom of the location, the ones I showed you before. So for example, this could be 
uh, empty in one of uh, the turns, and then that player can come here and gain three drachmas. He does not gain two reputation respectively. And I may have showed it in a way that I take this patient. This does not exist here, so it is empty, that's what I mean. Therefore, the player can come here, select this space next to the die, take the drachmas, but does not take or lose gain and lose uh, whatever is depicted at the bottom outside the box. It goes without saying that if, for example, you cannot afford to, gain, uh, to, to give what is required, for example, to lose one reputation here because you're already at the bottom, for example, then you, or give money, respectively, you cannot take the respective patient. So you cannot choose this um, column, respectively. I believe now it's a good time to speak about the assistance. After placing your welcome marker and taking your action in columns 2, 4 and 6, that means column 2, 4 and 6 over there, as indicated by the bottom, at the bottom of this uh, column, you gain the respective assistant if you do not have it uh, on your board. These are the assistants as I have shown you during the components breakdown. Keep in mind that they indicate something else as a reminder at the back. So, for example, by placing my column here, my welcome column, and selecting this tile, since this is the fourth uh, column, as indicated, if I didn't um, have this marker, this assistant, on the slot of my main board, and I'm not talking next to my main my player board, I'm talking on the slot, uh, meaning available, then I would pick it up from next to my board and place it, as I have shown you before, on the corresponding slot. If it was from the second uh, column, my placement, and I didn't have this one, I would place respectively that one back, so it is available. And the same goes for the sixth and final column, meaning this is a way you acquire back your assistance if you have spent them and used them throughout the course of um, the play. During your own future terms of the welcome phase, you're allowed to use that assistant token to affect which patient you may take in your chosen column. Anytime you use a token, it is returned above your player board and can be claimed again through future appropriate column placement. So let's see what those three assistants actually do in order to help you acquire uh, different patients than the ones that you are dictated according to the basic rules. First of all, we have the traveling assistant, which has this look. It's the one that goes, uh, is being acquired from the second column. The traveling assistant allows you to move a die from another region to your own column while maintaining the die value. Meaning, if this goes empty and I have uh, expanded my traveling assistant. It has, you see, horizontal arrows. That means that I can switch, uh, take, and this was not here, for example, say this was here, which means that I should be uh, acquiring only that uh, patient through this placement. By spending my traveling assistant, I can move a die horizontally onto my column here so that would allow me to pick up the one that I really want and not the one dictated by um, the appropriate corresponding die. The second one is the charitable assistant, the purple one, which is this one with uh, the vertical arrow. The charitable, the charitable assistant allows you to move a die vertically within your chosen region to any die value, leaving, of course, the die uh, at the current value. There is no need to change it when you do it. So, for example, I can take this one. Let's put this back so it's not confusing. Uh, I can move this vertically here and take this one, for example, through uh, placement. And the last one, the yellow one, this one, this is uh, the scheduling assistant, allows you to take the patient on top of the stack of the same region instead of 
the one next to your die. You still gain the items depicted below the space where the chosen die was currently located. Meaning by using this, which I, again I take from here, I remind you, I refresh actually from here, and this I refresh from here. So by using this one, the one with the box and the arrow pointing upwards, the, ch the charitable uh, the scheduling assistant, sorry, that allows me to take um, the patient on top of the stack of the same region. So I would take from the stack or from the stack where I placed actually if I'm the yellow player, I would take the one on the top and not the one next to the die indicated. Of course, as you can see, all these assistants provide me flexibility in choosing what actually makes more sense with my plans and with my inventory. Keep in mind that you may spend an assistant to move a die to an empty spot, so you may take drachmas instead of a patient. For example, you can use a die here and gain the drachmas when it's empty. Of course, this is a strategy depending on your choices, but you may not spend an assistant to move a die simply to obstruct another player from doing something uh, useful with them. What you need to do, your movement needs to benefit you directly. Players may use multiple assistant tokens during their turn, and you may use and then regain the same type of assistant a token during the same turn. Last but not least, assistant tokens may also be spent whenever you need to pay for medicine or drachmas, and that's why they have all of them the same uh, iconography at the back. Basically, each of those provides one medicine of the same type of color or two drachmas. And then you move it off your player board, indicating that you have used it. I have just placed them here to show you where I acquired them from, but they are just on or off your player board respectively. Once all markers have moved from the passive row to the active one at the bottom, then you move them back up to the passive row, the top one that is, maintaining the new left to right order. So this would go here, becoming first for the next, and they're going to go on the active one on the top. Now they are ready for the next turn. Players will take two more turns, beginning with the first player rolling the dice. Note that you do not refill the queue of patients between turns, this only happens at the start of rounds two to four. After all players have taken three turns in this phase, we move to the next step, which is essentially collecting the offerings. This is a very, very simple step. So what players do simultaneously, depending on the number of um, patients they have in their examination room, so they need to be on the top row, so I could have up to three. So only for the top row, you don't uh, take into consider under consideration the emergency, you collect all the drachmas from the bank as shown on each of the new patients in your examination room. So therefore, I would collect 4 plus 5 plus 6, 15 drachmas as an income. This is done as uh, an income step only, again, for the patients sitting on the top tier, which is your examination as shown here. The next phase, phase number two, is very simple. It's payment, misodosia. Doctors under your supervision do not work for free, as you would assume. You must pay to keep them in your employment. If you let your reputation slip, you will have to pay your doctors more to hold them for their services. But if your reputation gets higher, then of course you need to pay them less, because they benefit from working under your employment. This is a very simple step. Each doctor you employ those on the table in front of you, including the basic doctor, the one that you start the game with. As long as any other that you have, for example, let's say I have those three here, need to be paid during the payment phase. They all have the value that they need to be paid so that uh, this step is fulfilled. That value is not depicted on the tile itself. Don't confuse it with this hiring value. Your starting does not have a hiring cost. This is a hiring cost. I'm going to come back to the anatomy of the doctors. Their payment that they're going to receive, their salary, 
is dictated by the reputation tracker. You can see that this is more cheap and more expensive as your reputation falls down. Five, if your marker is here. Four, three, two, and one, if you're on the top of the reputation track. So for example, both a yellow and green player, for this step, they will need to pay for each of their doctors under their employment that amount of money. So three plus three plus three, I would need to pay nine drachmas for those three doctors that I have in front of me. The same goes for the green player. But if, for example, I was a red player, ignore the yellow border, I would pay two plus two plus two, that's six versus the nine that we've seen before. So you can imagine that you want to have your reputation high because that makes sense for you in order to have less wages to pay for uh, your doctors at this stage. Very important, if you do not have enough money or you choose not to pay, uh, you discard each doctor to whom you did not pay wages. You don't earn any points from the discarded doctor, even if they have already fulfilled some of their contracts, and you discard any patients that they were only associated with that doctor. We'll see this phase later on how it works and how the patients are locked with contracts with various doctors. But just as a quick reminder, let's see the anatomy of um, one of those uh, doctor tiles. You can see in front of you, this is an example of a doctor. I'm just holding it like that so that you can see. First of all, we have the name of the doctor, which is depicted here, and they all have a name. We also have the identification number, which is referred only in games with fewer than four players. That's the number here. Play, plays role only in less than four players' games. Then we have the cost in drachmas in initial hire state, meaning in order to hire these doctors, we haven't spoken about hiring and recruitment yet, you need to pay six drachmas for this one. Others may cost less for drachmas for this one, etc. Then we have the medicine the doctor is able to administrate, and that's indicated in each of the contract uh, edges. So he can administer uh, the purple and the green, whether this one can administer the purple and the blue or this one can administer only purple medicine. So it shows the type of medicine this doctor can administer. That doesn't mean that it can do it without you having the medicine itself. It's just that he can only administer this type of medicine based on his knowledge, of course. And the last is the contracts. If uh, the space shows a medicine icon, it indicates one contract. The doctors will have one to three contracts uh, and uh, possible possibilities to fulfill them. So this one has one and two. This is blank at the bottom. Others may have either one, this and that edge are blank, or they may have all three of them occupied, like this one. One, two, three contract edges. You're going to lock patients, hopefully by matching what they need uh, with uh, what uh, you, you can administer in order to gain victory points from that. Now the third phase is the recruitment, stelechosis. With an influx of patients to the temple, you will need to hire new doctors to help with the workload. Hiring a doctor and shopping for a medicine kit at the same time can be an efficient way to yield some good bonuses. Each recruitment phase offers you two chances to hire new doctors, after which the recruitment zone is reset for the following round. We perform the following steps. First, we option a region-free doctor, then we hire new doctors and purchase medicine kits, and then we reset the recruitment zone. Let's see how each of those three sub-steps work under the recruitment phase. First of all, A, the option of a region-free doctor. Based on the reputation track order, players take turns choosing whether or not they wish to take an option on a free region doctor. These are the face-up doctors at the top of the board that you can see at the blue sky background just above the temple. Optioning now reserves this doctor for you to hire it, potentially or not, depending on your choice, during your next step B. If you decide to reserve one of these doctors, you pay two drachmas to the bank and then place your option token on the available unoptioned doctor of your choice. 
Keep in mind that only one option token may be on each of the tiles, of course, and should you end up hiring this doctor, your true drachmas will be deducted from your hiring cost. So essentially you just um, lock some of your money, but if you don't take that doctor, you take them back. If you take that doctor, you uh, remo uh, reduce the price, the hiring price by two. You continue in reputation track order until all players have had the opportunity to reserve a doctor. So, so essentially, what you do here is if I want in um, reputation order, always, for example, to consider uh, getting this doctor because or that one, I would place on top of the doctor my uh, my token my optioning token and that means that when I move to the next phase I will have the option to buy it with a reduced price of two because now I need to pay two in order to reserve it uh, or uh, just uh, take the money back. So this is an essential step, a pre-step optioning a region free doctor. All players in turn order, in the same uh, track turn order, will have the option to um, option one of the free region doctors at the top of the temple we are still under the third phase recruitment and now we go under the sub step b which is hiring new doctors and purchase medicine kits first of all we turn the top tile face up in each of the region regional doctor stacks the ones facing down here so what i need to do is i need to simply place face up each of those stacks only the top one in each of these regions respectively maintaining that each doctor stays on the respective regional stack based again on the reputation track order players can choose one of the following three options first actually four you can also pass first you hire a regional doctor you can either do that or you can purchase a medicine kit or you can buy a bundle or you can pass. Let's see each of those separately. Hire a regional doctor. To hire a regional doctor, choose an available doctor on that face-up column and then in the regional recruitment zone, pay the hiring cost to the bank and take that doctor into your supply. Doctors are placed face up in front of you and they are now ready to treat patients. For example, I can pay four um, drachmas to hire this one and take it in front of me. Then following, uh, of course, the reputation track, next player is going to choose, they can take one of those options as well. And this is one of the cases that we can do. If you don't want to hire a regional doctor, what you can do is you can purchase a medicine kit. To purchase a medicine kit, you purchase simply an available medicine kit on the face-up column with a face-up regional doctor. So I can pay, uh, I can purchase one medicine kit either from here, here, here or here. I cannot pick up this one or that one because this does not have a face-up uh, regional doctor. The same goes now that you have seen the option to buy medical kits if the second player chooses to, um, of course, uh, buy one uh, regional doctor. They cannot buy from areas where you have chosen um, the doctor and it's absent, of course. So the rule is very simple. You cannot buy a doctor in a column where the medicine kit has been claimed, even if uh, for example, this cannot, uh, here, if someone claims this medicine kit, another player cannot buy this doctor. And the other way around, you cannot buy a medicine kit in a column where the doctor has been taken. So in those cases, both this doctor and this medicine kit are unavailable, for example. That's why we keep the rest of the medicine kits face down during setup. When you acquire, of course, uh, one of the medicine uh, kits, you just pay the money, the drachmas on the top, in order to gain the benefits, usually the medicine, that's why it's called medicine kit, at the bottom. So here I will need to pay 10 drachmas in order to get 3 
um, the portions and um, one green vial as well. Therefore, and then I discard this tile and I just take all these uh, medicine vials next to me. So this is how this um, step is performed if you choose to buy medicine kit respectively. What you can do instead of buying separately either a doctor or a medicine kit is you can buy a bundle. You can choose an available doctor and medicine kit simultaneously if they are not if they're in the same region and they are still there, meaning that none of the two has been claimed like here. So I can select a bundle like this one. Uh, of course, pay uh, accumulatively the cost, eight drachmas plus four drachmas for this column, and in that case I get as a reward the top uh, knowledge tile at the bottom of the bundle. So it it costs of course more to get both the medicine kit and the doctor the same it has to be in the same column the same region but uh, the game rewards me with one of the knowledge tiles keep in mind that knowledge tiles uh, some of them have the instant icon that means that you immediately need to discard it and take for example what it gives this is a five uh, drachmas reward or if it's something like that you can keep it next to you and you decide when it's best for you to use it and then of course when you use it you just discard it again they're all one time use and uh, of course um, it plays quite a role to have the flexibility of having some of them at the right time in order to help you with that. So this is how you pick either to hire a regional doctor, to purchase a medicine kit or to buy a bundle. Knowledge tiles as we said they are one time use so keep in mind that if it has a thunder, you need to discard it immediately and take the rewards. If not, you can use it later. The last option is pass. You can pass, of course. You are not required to take an action here, and you may choose to pass if you wish to do so. So hiring your option, doctors. Remember, when we option during step A, one of the doctors. So now we go to step, uh, sub step C. Uh, we're still in sub step uh, B, sorry, but we decide to hire. Uh, in addition our option doctors so after performing either a b or c or pass meaning hiring or or getting medicine kit or getting a bundle or passing then uh, you may decide that you also want to hire the doctor you optioned earlier with your option marker if you wish to do so you pay the doctor's hiring to the bank minus the two drachmas that you were you paid earlier and you take your option token back to the next to your board and of course the option doctor is joining your team the doctor is now ready to treat patients if you did not you do not want now to hire the region free doctor you just uh, of course uh, get your two drachmas back very important at this stage you only gain your optioned uh, region free doctors you cannot acquire an another region uh, doctor like we did before the last sub-step of uh, phase 3 recruitment is resetting the recruitment zone. Very simple, let me get those out of the way because they were used just to display some information previously. So let's say hypothetically that uh, these were acquired and maybe these two were optioned before. Okay. And we are something like that. So. How we reset the recruiting zone? Consider the recruiting zone this and that section in a cycle as clockwise. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that just now. We perform the following steps. We remove all option tokens remaining on the um, region free doctors, if any. It should be done earlier. We shift all the face up doctors remaining in the region free zone. That's this. Uh, sorry, that's this. So if you had any gaps like that, so we only took the first one and the third one we shift in this direction any remaining ones here okay or if it was something like that that would go here and that would go all the way here so they all shift to the right then any face-up doctors still present in the regional recruitment zone are moved clockwise starting from the one on the left then going to the rightmost open spot in the region free doctor so a zone. So, for example, I take this one and he travels clockwise and fills the first vacant slot. The same goes for this one. So you have to think it as a clockwise um, 
uh, recruitment uh, zone as I demonstrated before. If there are more regional doctors left face up than there are spaces in the region free zone, then we discard the doctors in the rightmost space of the region free zone, meaning that we need to discard now this one and then they also slide and then this one also moves and we repeat this step as many times needed so that eventually you will end up with all the stacks again face down and all these actually they're not discarded they are moved out with the remaining doctors they are not part of the region free zone of course, it could be that the scenario is a different one. Uh, if there are not enough regional doctors to fill all the spaces in the region free zone, we are doctors from the extra doctor stacks, which is the one uh, that we are setting aside as we discussed. If, for example, there are not enough doctors to fill the region free zone at this stage, then there will be fewer than four region free doctors in the following round. But that's a rare situation, I would say. So let's move to phase number four which is treatment therapia patients are waiting in your examination room to be seen and treated by a doctor with your careful recruitment you should be able to treat everyone but if a patient has to wait more than one round for treatment you may find their condition worsened well place order is not important in this uh, phase in phase number four treatment it may be helpful for you to treat your patients in turn order for your first few games so that you are all familiar but uh, gameplay wise this doesn't affect the game at any point so experienced players may be able to treat patients simultaneously to save time each patient needs specific medicine that can only be administered by specific doctors so what we perform are the following steps first we match patients with doctors match a patient from your examination or emergency room with one or more doctors that you can match the specific medicine they can administer. If a patient needs are being fully met by one doctor, another doctor cannot be attached to that patient. This means that you may not attach a doctor to a patient simply to fulfill a doctor's contract. So for example, we have one of the patients here. I can administer, she wants to have uh, all of the available medicine. Actually, she needs to have one blue, one green and two purple. That means that Philoxenos here can provide blue and purple and Asclepiodorus here can provide purple and green. Therefore, the blue and purple are being provided here. And if um, and the remaining herb one needs to be provided by here. So he provides a herb, he can administer herb and he can administer um, the uh, portion and uh, the purple as well therefore what you have to do at this stage is you have to put on top of the patient all respective medicine vials from your own stock the fact that uh, um, simply a doctor can administer is not sufficient that means that he has the knowledge to administer the specific um, medicine you need to have this medicine vials available at your stock therefore with the appropriate combination the ones who know how to use them they can administer and treat the patient respectively therefore this is what I just described is the administer medicine step where you add the required dose of medicine to the patient style if either of uh, uh, condition A match patients with doctors or administer medicine is not fulfilled fully then you cannot treat this patient at this time and they remain on your player board either your examination tier or your emergency tier keep in mind that at any time you can buy any single medicine vial that you are missing for three drachmas or you can spend any additional medicine vials that you have in other uh, categories that you're not using for example here here we use all three of them by any uh, chance but if you were not using for example herbs then you could spend uh, sell herbs at the uh, supply for two drachmas each and the last thing that we can also do is each of those assistants can be off removed from your board in order to provide either a medicine of their color in their vial of the color 
or two drachmas. So you can combine all of these possibilities in order to see what makes sense in order to fully treat a patient because that's what's important at this stage. To avoid any confusion, again, the patient I, re I recovered from either my emergency or my examination room as soon as I can identify that I can fully treat them. These doctors are available and they had their contacts, uh, contract sites uh, free for me to use. And then uh, I also had these medicine vials available uh, at my personal supply so I could all combine them and treat this patient successfully. Keep in mind that the doctors and patients obtain this round may be freely arranged and orientated into groups that is a cluster of doctors and patients and some groups of doctors and patients may remain from previous rounds. These existing groups may not be reorganized, however, these existing groups may be connected to a new patient doctor from other existing groups. So for example, let me show you a cluster. One could be like that and then you can have another patient here because you need to administer um, purple and blue and that satisfies this contract and then for example uh, this doctor can administer green and of course again you need to provide those um, vials those medicine vials on the patient tile so this is uh, uh, some cases of uh, a cluster of course uh, Philoxenos can also extend since he has a contract with icons at the bottom towards the bottom with additional um, for example, you can start treating some, some other patient that you have in your examination room, etc. And this is how this step works uh, respectively. You can have different clusters from previous rounds as mentioned before. Once a patient is um, of course uh, treated, they will score and they will flip. We will explain this in the next step. But you could have from previous rounds, doctors or clusters, with mix, mixture of treated and untreated uh, patients as such, meaning that they have been treated and scored in the next phase, so they're uh, still laying face down. You keep them face down because this determines if this doctor has fulfilled their contracts, all of the contracts. They have only fulfilled this side, that's why this is flipped, but this is still, and this will also be, they will be removed and flipped in the next scoring phase, and this will be also fulfilled, but the one at the bottom still is, uh, available and he needs also to fully treat them in order to flip that patient tile as well. So you can have different various uh, configurations of clusters depending on what you choose to do. Next step, next phase actually, is a score, bathmologysis. If left untreated, patients' conditions may turn into emergencies and if they are left for too long, the patients will die bringing dishonor to your hospital. However, well-treated patients will spread news of your skills across the land, bringing you and your team much repute in the world of medicine. In this phase, score phase number 5, all players simultaneously perform the following steps in order. First, you move your patients, then you earn reputation, then you discharge patients and then you retire doctors. Let's see them in order. First, you move your patients. If there are any patients left in your emergency room, this is your emergency room, the second tier, then they have not been treated uh, and they enter the afterlife. Unfortunately, they die. Place all untreated patients in your emergency room face down at the bottom of the section of your player board where they're doomed to wander the halls of hates until the end of the game and they will score you uh, three victory, negative victory points. You will lose three victory points for each of those respectively. So unfortunately, if they were left untreated, they die. Similarly, the condition of any patients that they were left untreated, still in your examination room, worsen and they move to your emergency, so they slide and their cases become more critical. The next thing we do is we earn reputation. Let's check that one. So we earn reputation. In reputation track order, count the number of patients you've treated fully this round. Basically, you see how many patients they are fully treated on your playing area. Those still face up next to doctors and gain that many victor reputation points. So for example, here I have fully treated Callisto and uh, Sophonisba here. So by fully treating two of them, I would gain 
two reputation points at the top of the track where we track reputation at the top of the temple. Then we discharge patients. For each patient treated this way, we earn victory points shown on their tile and return the medicine to the supply. So for example, I got two reputation because I fully treated those two. And what I do is I will score um, respectively six victory points for them and six victory points for them. And I will return the medicine to the supply. Then I simply flip face down their discharge patient styles to indicate that they have been discharged and treated. So this is going to be flipped, maintaining the connectivity and attachments. So as you can see, I have fully treated those two. I keep them face down and uh, attached to the doctors to indicate that one of that doctor contracts has been fulfilled. Then I retire doctors. For each doctor that has a tile attached to all of their contract spaces, like this one, he has for this contract and for that contract attached um, a tile which is uh, flipped down, meaning that the patient has been treated. Then what I do is I score victory points shown on the tile of the doctor itself, meaning that he has achieved four victory points because he has fulfilled both of his contracts. And then I can, uh, of course, retire that doctor by returning the tile to the box. Any patients now no longer attached to the doctor are also returned to the box. So in this case, I would return only this to the box because he has scored me. But of course, Philoxenos, he has one of the three contracts still not fulfilled. Therefore, I cannot retire him yet. So this is how we finish with the retiring doctor's face. The next thing that we do is we add bribes and refill the queues. We place one drachma on each patient tile remaining in the queue where the patients are lining. This is to bribe players to take these previously unclaimed patients and then fill the empty spaces in each queue with new patients from the top of the column's corresponding stack. Finally, we discard any leftover face-up medicine kits and flip each topmost tile face-up again. The game end. The game ends after four rounds. You may, of course, treat any patients remaining in your emergency room without the use of a doctor to the extent you still have available medicine to provide. You do not score victory points for these self-treated patients and they are returned to the box. For each untreated patient you re have re still remaining in your emergency room, you lose one victory point. You lose three victory points for each patient wandering the halls of hate at the bottom of your player board and the player with the most victory points has truly lived up to the teachings of Hippocrates and is declared the victor. In case of a tie, whoever is furthest ahead right on the reputation track wins. So this is how the game ends for multiplayer games. For solo games, the placement is based on the victory points that the non-player colors have received and there are various ways that the um, non-player tokens receive victory points throughout the game and they're very very simply explained throughout the rulebook at each step so you cannot miss it. So there you have it, this is how the game ends. Just a quick note, some of the iconography it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, icons like that mean that you exactly gain what it shows as you can see. More or less on the knowledge styles which have a bit of more uh, icons for us to explain. This means that you instantly of course, when uh, receive five drachmas or two herb uh, medicine vials. If you have, for example, this patient knowledge tiles, these knowledge tiles are patients that you have, you can treat as other patients. However, they are not stored on your player board. They will never enter your emergency room and they will not give you negative points if left untreated at the end of the game. So that's very helpful and flexible. Similarly, you can have uh, these knowledge tiles where depict doctors that you can have in your hand and use when appropriate. They do not need to be paid wages and they will be discarded after they have been used respectively, scoring you, of course, victory points. You also have icons and uh, knowledge styles like this one, indicating, for example, region. At the end of uh, a phase one, 
welcome where you collect the offerings from your patients you may double the amount of drug must you receive from one patient to the indicated region and of course there are other icons as well linked with region specific bonuses so lots of flexibility from the knowledge tiles that are quite interesting but this is overall everything you need to know on how to play Hippocrates the board game okay so there you have it this is how you play Hippocrates the board game of course you would expect that I would be super hyped about this game being uh, a Greek myself and uh, loving the theme this is a fresh theme and uh, the mechanisms and all the ideas applied into the game uh, are really really well thought and there is a lot of love thrown into the game from development point of view to designing point of view to the visual looks and the aesthetics of the game everything really is amazing but uh, let me speak about the experience itself and about the gameplay okay this is a great design of course it would be a great design because uh, the designer has done uh, titles like Troa and uh, Black Angel but uh, even if you haven't played those games this design here uses simple ideas that are very very well crafted together in order to give an excellent final gaming experience uh, this reminds me not in gameplay but uh, actually in a ratio of depth difficulty uh, um, and strategy another game called Concordia plays completely different but the, it is the same idea and the same principle that I really love sometimes you don't need pages and pages of rules you don't need strict and difficult ideas and a lot of details you need a very robust and working system which we have here and the depth comes from uh, the combination of the possibilities the things that you pick up for example which doctors to hire which patients to take when to choose someone to leave a patient to, to worse and in the situation to become worse the situation and the medical status uh, from moving from the examination room to uh, the emergency room how to uh, manage your income your resources your uh, medical vials which of course you're needed for treating a doctor but here you have two things that you need to balance you need to, to balance your resources so you need medicine vials but also you need to balance the doctors because they have the knowledge to admit specific type of medicine and you need to combine their knowledge by a tile placement mechanism with the resources that you have in a convenient and flexible way so that you maximize your output you need to have one doctor uh, treating as many uh, uh, patients as possible of course depending on the contract uh, possibilities that the doctor has uh, the system of the dice and how you can manipulate the dice in order to pick up some of uh, the patients throw something to your opponents steal something under their nose it's extremely well done uh, the assistant system is also very nice because it gives you flexibility and by timing it correctly uh, makes a great deal and have a really really nice feedback and um, uh, gaming experience and satisfaction from using them at the correct time overall i would say that this is a tremendous experience i really had the blast i highly highly recommend it all these fans out of there of um, simple but robust and uh, deep uh, puzzly like and thinky games without having details to remember unnecessary rules and lots and lots of pages of uh, you know um, subcategories and subcases and what happens if and what and etc if you want a very clean robust system Hippocrates does the job and delivers excellently so it's only fitting that such a great name has a great design behind it and the final outcome is amazing so highly recommended on my side uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I will be able to release some more video and some live playthrough as well. And uh, till next time, many thanks for watching. <music>